The music industry is known these days for having some questionable ethics. From taking advantage to young talent from poorer backgrounds to outright not paying artists what they're owed, record labels have always been willing to do whatever it takes to increase the size of their multi-billion dollar empires. But what is the worst record deal in history? There are so many to choose from, but I think the Jackson 5 may have received the absolute roughest deal since the start of the modern music industry. The Jackson 5 made millions for Motown in the early 70s and their relentless work ethic meant that they managed to release three albums in a single year. Unfortunately, they were taken advantage of pretty severely. They only underreported 2.7 to 2.8% of their total royalties from record sales. Not only that, but they weren't even able to retain creative control over what music they were recording. Part of why they got such a rough deal is because a majority of their output were songs written by Motown's writing team themselves or were cover songs. This meant the group weren't receiving any songwriters credits from most of their music. In 1975, the Jackson 5 announced they were leaving Motown to move to Epic Records at a press conference in New York. This was a huge step up financially for them, with a reported 10 times higher royalty rate being offered by Epic. Unfortunately for the five, Motown hit them with a breach of contract suit and won the rights to the name The Jackson 5. Motown did let them record for Epic under a different name though, so the group changed their name to The Jacksons in 1976. Little is known about the true inner workings of their business relationship with Motown, but here's the bigger picture. The Jackson 5 found that they were reportedly earning just 2.8% in royalties on record sales, partly due to a bad deal and partly due to the corporation being responsible for the songwriting, leaving them out of a big cut of credits. To make matters worse, Motown would leave the 5 with little to no creative control over their output, so even if they wanted to write their own songs, they were often met with pushback from the label, who preferred them to release cover songs or songs written by them. It's not entirely clear how good the relationships were between Motown and the Jackson 5 after their departure, but Michael and Jermaine both have stories from after this time. Jermaine was the one brother who stayed with Motown when his brothers moved to Epic, crediting Motown for being originally a black owned and run business. He said, I think in the past a lot of the pioneers had been victims of that because they were shady contracts. These record labels, they did these record contracts to their advantage. The artists sold the records, but they really got robbed back then. Michael, on the other hand, opted to file a lawsuit in the early 2000s against Motown's parent company Universal, accusing them of failing to follow the terms of a 1980 agreement. The suit alleged that Motown agreed to pay royalties for any best of compilations of his Motown recordings with the five or solo, as well as for newly issued or previously unreleased material. Despite several releases fitting under this category in Jackson's eyes, Michael claimed neither Motown or the parent company Universal paid a single dollar in royalties. It's worth bearing in mind the Jackson family, especially Michael, do have a very long history of legal battles, which needs an entirely separate video. But there you have it, 27 to 2.8% split between five, being paid just a tiny fraction of the money they were bringing in. It has to make Jackson 5 have one of the worst record deals in history, in my opinion.